Welcome to this segment of Citizens Forum. Uh, this is the Walter and Jack show coming up. Um, lots to talk about. Uh, first, I'd like to thank our volunteer crew and the Shaw staff who makes this whole thing possible. Um, Walter, I'd just like to start off by talking a little bit about the um, what, what's been happening in New Brunswick over the past week, which was, I mean, I'll, I'll tell it the way I see it, which is sure different than what we're getting through through the media. What I see is hundreds of Canadian citizens are, and I've got this written down because I can't remember this stuff if I have to say it, but I'll just read it. Hundreds of Canadian citizens are standing up to the insane and murderous corporate lunatics who are happy to poison everything and everyone in their never-ending insane quest for more money and more power. And these people are standing up to them. Forty of these Canadian heroes have now been arrested by the police. The police, unfortunately, are acting on behalf of totally undemocratic, two-bit politicians, provincial and federal, right across this country, who have taken over the government of our country, these politicians. And they're willing to sell us out 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, to their corporate masters, year after year after year. And you know what? It's not even their fault. It's our fault, because we Canadians have allowed our democracy to be completely taken for us, and it's now being run by the corporations for the corporations. And of all the things we've got to do, we have got to take back our democracy, get our government back in our hands, which is the only safe place for it to be. We've got to take back our government, and we've got, maybe first, before we can even do that, to build a media that will begin to inform Canadians about the truth of what's going on. You know, the Times colonists ran two or three stories about what's happened in New Brunswick. And I don't think, in fact, I'm quite sure they did not mention the word fracking even one time. And that's what the whole story is all about. It's about fracking. It's about the destruction of our planet. Well, I mean, I agree. You know, they're running roughshod over our rights. By the way, when these people want to come onto your property to frack for gas, they can do that. There's no stopping them. So, you know, it's basically you're finding out about whether or not you own your own land when, when these, these large corp companies can come on and, and start drilling in your land. You know, the other thing I noticed that, you know what we're being treated like? We're being treated like how the First Nations people were being treated like for the last 200 years. And, and, and like, they're hip to the scene. They know how it works. They know you have to fight for your rights. You're no other way. They have to f block the roads and fight for their rights. These people won't understand anything other than that. So great, great uh, congratulations to them for what they're doing. I mean, it's been framed as some type of terrorist <laughs> organizations or something uh, amongst the native the Indians for what they are doing. But the thing is, it couldn't be further from the truth that the, you know we're, uh, our rights are being, rough, being run roughshod and the only other thing I could say is, like, thank God in British Columbia, we, our main opposition part of the NDP, oh, I guess they like fracking too, don't they? <laughs> Forgot that one. They're all hot to trot on fracking. So, I mean, and this is a problem is we don't have any real opposition anywhere. This is a natural, even if they weren't sincere, they could get, election, they could get elected on being opposed to fracking. But no, they chose not to oppose fracking. They just want to go along with it. As I said, no, it's an, uh, an uh, environmental catastrophe coupled with a economic disaster. I mean, it's just wrong in every front. If you're thinking about benefits for the public, now it does work quite well if you're a large oil and gas company. But for everybody else, it's a terrible deal. So here we are. I mean, we have nowhere to turn politically, it seems, at least within the two big parties. I don't know where the Green Party is on this but there seems to be an opportunity and the media of course is just pathetic and has been pathetic for years 
I mean, the media is maybe the biggest reason, the corporate control of the media may be the biggest reason why we're in the messes that we're in. And we're in late innings here. I mean, yeah. the oceans are dying. We are, Fukushima, the, 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 the nuclear disaster in Japan, which the media won't even talk about, it's beginning to talk about it now two years later because things are so bad that they can't keep, keep it hidden anymore. And we have nowhere to turn politically, nowhere. No, even with the Greens, I mean, you think about it, uh, Andrew Weaver has, you know, uh, been, uh, you know, a climate change scientist and uh, speaking out against global warming and all that. And uh, this type of uh, exploration and, and burning of fossil fuels is very, very, very dangerous and for the environment. The problem is, and the same thing with his predecessor, or not, uh, sorry, Andrew's not the leader of the party, but he's the, the major force in the party. But Jane Sterk also, they could never really talk about the other, even more important issues, the issues around social justice, the issues around human rights, and uh, the issues around global corporatism. Uh, these are, seem to be concepts that are outside their, their understanding. They'd rather talk about these very narrow, you know, talk about carbon credits uh, and, uh, you know, carbon footprint and, and all this stuff, which is a lot of mumbo jumbo to tell you the truth, Jack, for most people. It's just, it just doesn't, it leaves most people cold. You know, we, we, of course we want to protect the environment, but you can't detach this from human rights issues and democracy issues and all the other things. And the Greens were, again, uh, if provincially, are very, very lame on the, in that department. Now, th we're not talking about the federal Green Party, nor we're talking about Elizabeth May, who is a totally uh, different character, and, and Elizabeth is much more attached to these issues. And if the Greens provincially want to have a shot at becoming a real party instead of just a brand, they have to attach themselves fundamentally to these issues and, and talk about them in a broader context of the whole of the impact on society, not just on carbon footprint and those other terms, it just uh, because most people don't understand that. So we started off by talking about fracking, and um, it's something that we've got to stop. We've got to be able to stop that. I, I mean, you know, we tried to stop smart meters. Hydro is moving ahead with us. It's one disaster after another, but we have got to stop them somewhere. Um, Let's move on. Um, pit bulls versus retirement age. That's, uh, that's the next topic. So I was walking down the street a couple of days ago and um, the guy, a guy was walking a little bit behind me and a pit bull kind of snapped at him. You know, somebody had a pit bull on a, on a leash and, and the, the dog snapped at the person and nothing happened and we all kept on going. But it made me think, what a difficult time. I mean, there's a story in the paper ongoing about pit bulls attacking children, pit bulls attacking other dogs, but we can never sort of do anything to phase pit bulls out so it's not a dog that people can keep. Right? We just can't do that. We, it seems impossible in the Canadian context to make that happen. And yet, when Mr. Harper wanted to raise the retirement age from 65 to 67, he did that basically overnight. I think a lot of people don't even know that it was done. But yes, it has been done in one of Mr. Harper's omnibus budgets a, a year or so ago. The retirement age was raised from 65 to 67. Now, it's not going to happen for seven or eight years from now. But people who are now in their 50s, uh, when it gets to that stage of their life where they used to be able to retire at 65, they're now going to have to work another two full years so that the 1% can continue to steal everybody's money because that's basically who they're going to be working for. Yeah. And it just, and you know, another thing is the, the Canadian general who led the bombing attack on Libya, which has devastated that nation, caused untold suffering. A Canadian general commanded the NATO air attack on Libya. That was done without even telling us. And yet pit bulls, you know, we don't seem to be able to deal with that issue. You know, it just makes you realize how completely corrupt this country has become. Well, and all, you know, all these policies, um, particularly provincially, because they're so, they're so bankrupt for ideas. They just simply don't have any ideas. They have to wait for the public relations firms, 
from New York or whatever to give them their lines before they can have could, before they can open up the legislature. You know, the liberals didn't have didn't wasn't planning on being elected, therefore they had no no legislation to talk about, and they had to wait for somebody else to tell them what to talk about. And in, in federally, with Harper and that crowd, it's not that much different either. <clears throat> it's just not something that, you know, all these topics are just not of any interest to them, unless it's controlling uh, the Canadian economy, unless it's getting us completely addicted to, to the tar sands oil, to the point where our economy, right across Canada now, we're getting so tied into that that we're going to be very hard to to uh, remove ourselves and get into more sustainable development. You know what you said a few minutes ago, Walter, about how you know the native people have had this done to them for so long, and now it's being done to all of us. I mean, that's that's the big change, you know. And um, can we can we all fight back? Can we create a better country? Um, I mean, that's why I got rid of John F. Kennedy, as we talked about in the earlier segment, you know, because he was trying to do some good stuff. That's the danger you face. I mean, these, pu these people who run the world are vicious, and they will stop at nothing. Um, yeah, well, it's, uh, it's you know, they, they want to make money, and anything that stands in the way of making money is just something, an object to be dealt with, other than there's no moral or morals or ethics involved in it. Let's talk for just for a minute about CETA. CETA is the trade deal that Mr. Harper has signed with the European Union. Now, all the details have yet to be written, but you know the media is telling us it's a good deal, and the media is telling us it's all about beef and cheese or wine or something. But I can guarantee you, it's not about beef and cheese and wine. This is a completely corporate deal. It's the corporations of the world who have written the deal, and Canada and the European Union have signed it. There's some hope, maybe, that some of the European countries will not ratify it um, because of the dangers it poses. That's the only hope we have, because Harper, intent, or whoever the politicians are, they'll sign it for Canada. <clears throat> whatever they come up with, whatever plan they hatch, whatever rules and regulations they come up with, trump national laws, tra trump provincial regulations, trump environmental protection laws, trump all other, other development ideas about you know keeping an economy going in a province uh, they don't look at watersheds uh, and they don't look at natural boundaries they don't look at people they people don't look at the environment they don't simply care. they have to hatch these plans these corporations hatch these plans because they can set up rules that will trump national sovereignty and we're just giving up our sovereignty to the corporate world with these deals. Why do you need them? I mean, boats float on the water, they go to France, you can trade with them any day of the week. You know, what is the deal here? You know, obviously they had to change something and it's not ever coming to our advantage. I just, I just know that's gonna be the way it is. We always pay one way or the other. Yeah. And, and the people of Europe will pay as well, and yeah. the corporations will benefit. Yeah, as they push push wages down, and they push workers' rights down, and you know, it is just a race to the bottom. Um, last year, in a story that was kept completely secret, uh, California voted to raise their taxes. The people of California, in a referendum, voted to raise their taxes. Uh, if you Google, uh, you know, California raised taxes, Jerry Brown, who was the governor, you may find it. Um, when, I, when I heard the story, which was very recently, I was absolutely shocked that California could have voted to raise their taxes, and it took a year for, for me to hear about it, and I try to, you know, I try to follow this stuff. France has banned fracking. Quebec has a moratorium on fracking. Europe labels GMOs. Mexico, a Mexican court has banned the planting of uh, genetically modified corn in Mexico. Um, in Quebec, television advertising is not allowed that is aimed at kids, right? In Quebec, they don't allow the corporations to go after their children. That's something we should think about doing. You know, there's, there is good stuff happening. We never hear about it, but there is good stuff happening, and we've just got to increase that. In Quebec, you know, it's a wonderful province, and they want to separate. No wonder they look at the rest of Canada and you go like, what do you want to be attached to that for? I mean, one bad decision after another. At least they understand things about autonomy and self-determination and, 
and uh, they do uh, do understand the the big picture. I think because of being sort of an island of, of francophones and a sea of anglophones and all that. So they've, they've always looked at it, the world in a little different way than we have and, and recognize danger a little further off perhaps than what we have. And I think, you know, they have a very vibrant society and, and it's because of that. Yeah, and you know, I notice the way the media is always pitting English Quebec against, uh, I'm sorry, English Canada against French Canada. Instead of celebrating the wonderful things that Quebec does, they always pit us against each other. And behind that smokescreen of anger, where the English and the French are, are, you know, fighting because the media tells us to fight, they've taken over our nation. Yeah, and it, really, that's, you know, I'm from New Brunswick on the border of Quebec. 40% uh, of New Brunswickers are francophone. We're f officially bilingual. Um, there was, there's never has been an issue between English and French in New Brunswick, and I think you can see that there's really the fundamental values and the goodness in people, uh, it, it goes across all lines. You know, the people want to ha live a happy, healthy life, and they want to have some control over what happens to them. And we all share those values. Thanks for watching this segment of Citizens Forum, and it's time for everybody to step up to the plate. Uh, if we don't, uh, I mean, disaster really is right around the corner. Thanks, Walter. Thanks for watching this segment of Citizens Forum.